I have another flashlight review for you. This time it is the Thrunite W1. A very tiny, compact, yet very capable EDC flashlight. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this flashlight, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to point out that this flashlight was sent to me by Thrunite for testing and review. I did not pay for this flashlight. Okay, so what I'd like to do is take the camera down to my tabletop here, show you some close-ups of the flashlight, go over its specifications and how it operates, then we'll get outside and do a little testing with it. All right, before we look, take a look at the specifications, then move on to the modes of operation for the Thrunite W1, I just want to point out that this is the Black Scout Survival version of the W1, and it's a collaboration between Black Scout Survival and Thrunite, and they came up with this nice, dark, flat, matte, if you will, uh, forest green color for it, and I think that looks quite nice. So let's go through the specifications. So to begin with, it is, it, well, you can see it's a small flashlight and it comes in at two and five eighths inches in length and just seven eighths of an inch wide at its widest diameter. It is 1.8 ounces in weight and it uses a through, no, through night proprietary 16340 battery with a 650 milliamp charge. And although it is a proprietary battery that's in it, it will use other uh, 16340 batteries of different makes. It'll also use a CR123 battery, either the rechargeable type or the non-rechargeable type in it, although it won't have the same uh, output as the 16340 has in it. It is equipped with a micro USB charge port, not the newer USB-C, but the micro USB is so popular and so around so many uh, flashlights and so many devices, there's no problem getting a charging cable for this. In fact, one does come with it, which I'll show you in a minute. The on-off button is on the side. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. One unique feature of this flashlight over some of the others is that this one has a magnetic tail cap, which is quite interesting if you find yourself in a position where you need to do a little work in a darkened space and you need that illumination and there's a metal surface that you can hook this to. I'll use a ruler for demonstration purposes, but it will hold on quite well. It's, it stays on. It doesn't want to fall off. It's quite quite secure in most, uh, most situations. Okay, so let's take a look at the accessories that came with the through night. So it did come in this small, nice little box. I say nice because I like the fact that there's nothing fancy. No, no extra expenses were spent on the box. You know, less is more in this case in, in the box. In addition to the flashlight, was the charging cable, a micro USB to USB charging cable, small bag with two O-rings and two charging port covers, and the instructions. What else do you need? All right, so that's what came with the box. So let's go on to the modes of oper... So let's go on to the modes of operation. So for this flashlight, I'm going to start at the uh, lowest Firefly mode and work my way up to Turbo and then Strobe. So Firefly is achieved by depressing the button on the top here. While the flashlight is off, you just hold it down for about two seconds and on comes the Firefly. As you can see, it's not very bright. It's not very bright, but it is bright enough in a darkened area like inside of my tent that, uh, you know, I can see it. If I lay it down somewhere, I'm not going to lose it. And it gives me just enough light so that I can reach around and find things. And what I like about the 0.5 lumen of the Firefly is that it will run for 30 days. So if I left it on, I have no worry I'm going to be running out of battery anytime soon. Let's turn that off. Now we'll start. It comes on at the low intensity and low intensity is 7.5 lumens, which will run for 60 hours. Press it again. It'll move. Oh, sorry. I'm using the Firefly. Let's do that portion of it again. You know what? cut. That's all there is. Let's see if we can. <coughs> all 
All right, let's take a look at the specifications for the Thrunite BSS W1 rechargeable flashlight, and then we'll go into the modes of operation. But just before I do, I just want to point out the reason it's called a BSS flashlight is because this is a, a collaboration between Thrunite and Black Scout Survival, another YouTube content creator with uh, quite a large following. They work together to come up with this color on this flashlight, and I find it it's a nice matte dark green color, which I think is quite attractive on this flashlight. Light. Okay, so let's go over some of the specifications for it. So the overall length of this flashlight is just two and five eighths inches, and at its widest, it's seven eighths of an inch thick. And uh, it comes in at 1.8 ounces, so that's with the battery included, of course. And that battery is a Thrunite proprietary 16340 battery with a 650 milliamp charge on it. But uh, it will, of course, use other brand 16340 batteries and it was also used the more common to find CR123 batteries, either the rechargeable type or the non-rechargeable type. It does have a micro USB charge port, not the newer, or newer USB Type-C charging point, but that's, or port, but that's just fine because uh, there's a lot of those cables still around. In fact, one comes with this flashlight, which we'll uh, show you in a moment. It is waterproof to an IPX8 standard, which is to say it'll, it'll survive two meters submersion and is impact resistant to 1.5 meters. So what do you get when you purchase one of these flashlights? Very simple. You get the flashlight with this pocket clip, which I think is worth, let's see if I can bring this up and make sure I stay in frame, of course. There we go. Okay, it's a two-way pocket clip, so it can, can be clipped into a pocket or onto something else like the brim of a hat. You can see how it goes in two directions. Quite a clever little pocket clip, and I have put this on the brim of a ball hat, and unlike some of the other flashlights I've tried this with, this is not too heavy. It actually works quite well as a headlamp using it like that. All right, what else do you get here? Small, unremarkable looking cardboard box. And I like that. Nothing wasted on this, just a simple little cardboard box. But inside, in addition to the flashlight, you're going to receive your USB to micro USB charging cable a pair of replacement O-rings and two of the charging port covers and a set of instructions. What else do you need? Keep it simple. There you go. Okay, so let's talk about the modes of operation for the Zero or W1. And I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to start with the Firefly mode. And at Firefly, you access from when the flashlight is turned off and you do that by holding the on-off button, which is right here, down for about two seconds or so. And there we go. So that's the, the, the Firefly mode at 0.5 lumen, which will last for 13 days. Not very bright, but it does last a long time. Long enough that I wouldn't worry if I left this on in my tent uh, overnight that it's going to drain the battery. And that way I know I'll be able to find this in the dark by leaving it on. Okay, turn that off. Now I'm going to turn it on and let's may have to cycle through here. Here we go. So that is the low mode for this flashlight, and the low mode comes in at 7.5 lumens. Not extremely powerful, but plenty powerful for reading or navigating around in a dark room in the house anyway. And that will last for 60 hours. Take it up one notch, and now we're at medium, and medium is 58 lumens, and that will last for five hours. And you know, 58 lumens, again, doesn't sound like a lot when you talk about some of the flashlights that are available on the market today, but 58 lumens is brighter than some of the headlamps that I use for a long time camping. And I found them plenty bright for doing the work I needed around a campsite, like starting the fire or, or maintaining the fire, or even setting up a tent in the dark or cooking a meal. So 58 lumens is still a good brightness. However, you can do better by taking it up to high, one, two, and three, there we go, high. And at high, I'm using 215 lumens, but and that will last for 90 minutes, an hour and a half. So that's not bad at all. Now, it doesn't matter, and going into turbo, it doesn't matter if the flashlight is turned off or turned on, but it will, with two strokes, come into turbo mode, turbo mode, and I know the, the uh, camera is darkening in reaction to this, uh, so the turbo mode is 693 lumens for 75 seconds, and then the heat protection circuitry will take it down to 231 lumens for another 74 minutes. So that's pretty good as well. Now, the last thing, there is a strobe, and again, strobe can be activated either from the off position or while the camera's on by three taps, one, two, and three, and there's the strobe mode. Okay.
So I think what we should do now is get outside when it turns dark and do a little testing with this flashlight and then we'll come back for some closing thoughts. So what I thought I would do before we head outdoors is uh, just do a little testing inside in my basement. This is my gear room downstairs where I keep all my stuff at. I'll turn the light off in one second. And the reason I'm testing indoors as well as outdoors because of course this small flashlight, the W1, is really a small pocket EDC or everyday carry flashlight that's ideal for having around with you wherever you go and you might uh, get into a space in the basement or like us here in Nova Scotia we've had a couple of snowstorms now and the risk of power failures is there so it's nice to have a flashlight like this at hand so I will run it through its different levels I'll turn the light off let's see what we have here so this is well let's see what it is there is low now, low is not showing up as well on the camera as it is in uh, real life because what you're not seeing is the spill out from the center right now. You're just getting that uh, center beam and this is unique and I'll, this will probably show up better outdoors but this has kind of a hotter spot in the center and then, then a little bit of a flood so that you know right up front you can get some intensity right where you're aiming at and then still pick up some, some uh, light on the sides. Let's take it up one. So now we're at medium intensity and medium intensity plenty for me to find what I'm looking for in the basement especially if the lights go out. I have to turn it off, turn it on, one and now this is high. So high is plenty bright as you can imagine and of course there's one more which is turbo and turbo is just intense in the basement in here and I haven't shown you the uh, strobe. Maybe I have, but we'll do it anyway, the strobe. So there's the strobe. Now, you know, what, what are you using that for indoors, of course, but I just wanted to be able to show it to you. All right, let's, let's get outdoors and we'll do some testing around my property. So I'm in the driveway of my home right now and the illumination that you can see on camera is coming from the LED street light right at the end of my driveway. And there's a bit of snow around, but you can't see clearly is the car that's in my driveway. So this is a good test of maybe just using a flashlight when you get home or near here going out to the car. You just want to be able to check around the car or maybe you need the light to use your keys to get into the car. So here we are. This is low and not all that bright. Medium, now that is, that is considerably brighter and bright enough to do everything I need. And high, so this is high. High is, as you can see here in the driveway, and I will be going around the back of the house where it's darker, is plenty high. Now let's see if I can get turbo. Turbo is almost blinding when you, when you compare it. All right, let's go around the back of the house. So I'm set up in my backyard now, and there is no lights on the houses on either side of me. The only lighting I can see are houses that are at least of one or two backyards away. So let's start with the low mode, which isn't bad. Now, of course, it is reflecting off of the snow in the back here, so that's making it look a little bit brighter. Uh, you know, it's enough if I need it to get around to use this, but I think we can do better. Medium, now medium, is a lot brighter and now you can probably see quite clearly that dual intensity with the hot spot in the center and the flood around the outside so that's cool now turn it off on there's high high is quite a bit brighter i don't know if it's picking up on the trees but uh, the trees are i don't know 40 50 feet away so as you can see right around the base of the trees i can see pretty much everything around here. Now let's take it up to turbo. Now I've got some light. Everything in my backyard and the backyards adjacent to me is lit up as well as the houses. All right, just a few final thoughts on the BSS W1 from Thrunite. Do you know, it, what this really is intended to be, at least in my opinion, is an EDC flashlight. This is not a primary flashlight that I would use for camping in the woods. I would use this as a backup for sure to another flashlight or another headlamp. And as I mentioned, this can be used with a head, as a headlamp quite effectively with that two-way pocket clip on it. It has good runtime. It has good illumination, but it's, you know, I'd still consider it as a 
a backup for out use out in the woods if I really felt I needed some illumination to get out at uh, the night. You know, for just doing chores around the campsite, yeah, absolutely. But for if I was trying to navigate, I think I'd want something brighter and something with a longer run time. So it's a good small pocket flashlight that works really well as an EDC flashlight. It's not especially strong, but as you saw in the tests, uh, you know, around my driveway and around my backyard and in my house, that it has a plenty of illumination for all the jobs you would expect for a flashlight that you're going to be just carrying in your pocket for the most part. Okay, if you have any comments or any questions on the Throughnight W1 BSS version, uh, please put them in the comments section below. If I will, of course, be putting all the information where you can purchase this in the uh, uh, video description below. But and uh, until next time, of course, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now. Hi folks, if you're still with me at this point in the video, then I have something special for you. Through Night has offered to send one person their very own Black Scout Survival W1 flashlight. If you're interested in entering it on the draw, all you need to do is put a comment in the comment section below that you are interested, and then one week from today, I'll make a draw online for that winner. All right, good luck to everyone.